Next, we want to visualize the streamlines of the flow. This can be accomplished in two ways. One method is using contours of the stream function. To start, in the results tab, click contours as before and select new. In the new pop-up window, name this stream function contours. Change contours of to velocity and ensure stream function is selected. On the left side, uncheck the filled box and also uncheck auto range. This lets us select a range of values of the stream function to display. Enter 13.11 kilograms per second for the minimum and 14.16 kilograms per second for the maximum. I know that these values work to highlight the flow in the region of the airfoil, but in practice you may need to determine good values by looking at the full contours or by trial and error. Finally, click the draw mesh box and select airfoil from the surfaces list as before. Click display and close this window. Finally, click save slash display to view the streamlines and close this window. Near the airfoil, we can see that the resulting contours have created a useful visualization of the streamlines. We can see the stagnation region near the leading edge as expected, and the air moves around the front of the airfoil as predicted as well. The flow leaves directly from the trailing edge as predicted by the cutta condition as mentioned in pre-analysis. A more detailed visualization of the streamlines can be created using path lines. Start by selecting path lines in the results tab and clicking new. In the new window, name this streamlines. Under color by, select velocity and ensure velocity magnitude is selected. Under the release from surfaces list, select inlet. As before, check the draw mesh box and select airfoil from the list and click display and then close this window. Click save slash display to view the new visualization. If we zoom out, we can see that this creates streamlines over the entire flow domain, but we are more interested in flow near the airfoil. To get a better resolution in that region, select Create on the top left side of the Results tab, and select Line Slash Rake. Name this surface seed line. This will define a line at which fluid particles are released to determine their path. Selecting line defines a straight line connecting the endpoints. Selecting rake does a similar thing, but forms the line with a selectable number of distinct points. This lets us control how many particles are released along the seed line, so we will use the rake option. We can now select the endpoints of this rake. After messing with it for a little bit, I found that setting these endpoints to be negative 3, negative 1 to negative 3, 1 works well.
This creates a vertical line a little ahead of the airfoil. Finally, set the number of points to be 101 to determine the number of C points along the line. And click Create. You can then close this window. We can now use this surface to improve the streamline's visualization. If the path lines window is not already open, expand graphics in the tree, and under path lines, right click on streamlines, and click edit. In the release from surfaces list, deselect inlet, and select seed line, and click save slash display to view it. You can then close this window. Zooming in near the airfoil, we can see that this better shows the streamlines in the region we want. Having them colored by velocity magnitude better shows the trends in the flow. Not only can we see where the stagnation point occurs, but it is easier to see that this is a low velocity region. It is also clear that the velocity speeds up when moving around the leading edge as expected. Finally, we can investigate the pressure coefficient around the airfoil. This is useful to understand lift generation. In the results tab, select XY plot and click new. Name this CP plot. Ensure y axis function is pressure and change it to be pressure coefficient. Ensure x axis function is set to direction vector. Under surfaces, select airfoil. We are interested in visualizing an xy plot of the pressure coefficient. Alternatively, you can export the tabular data by clicking the Write to File box on the left. For our case, we can click Save Slash Plot to view the graph. And close this window. This shows the pressure coefficient along the length of the airfoil. The two curves correspond to the upper and lower surfaces. An important thing to remember is that, since low pressure is generated on the top of the airfoil, the lower curve represents the upper surface, and vice versa. We can see the extreme low and high pressure regions near the front of the airfoil, as expected. Additionally, we can see that the pressure coefficient reaches 1 on the top of the curve. This is the stagnation point, and this serves as a good check that the simulation was performed correctly. Finally, we can check the lift and drag coefficients of the airfoil. Expand Report Definitions in the tree, and double-click on CL. In the new window, click Compute. This displays the converged value of the lift coefficient in the console. We can close the window. This gives us a converged value of 0.682. This is pretty close to both our hand calculations and the experimental data. While our various assumptions likely contributed to it being larger than either value, Mesh refinement will likely bring the value even closer to our expectations. Similarly, double click CD in the tree. In the new window, click Compute as before and close the window. In the console, we can see that the converged drag coefficient value is about 0.006. This is very close to the expected value of zero, with small errors contributing to the difference. As before, an improved mesh would further decrease this value. 
With this completed, make sure to save your project. If prompted, select Save for Current and Future Calculations to help preserve your work, and click OK.